we've got probably two and a half, three thousand plants in here, and they take a lot of drink. So um, in the mornings, usually it takes about an hour to water the gardens, depending on what the temperature has been like overnight. And then often we water again in the evening, again, dependent on the, the heat. Butterfly houses started in earnest in the early 1980s. Um, originally, uh, sorry, it was public exhibitions. There were, there were people keeping butterflies privately before then. Um, the butterfly house, at the, this butterfly house, the Natural History Museum, was going to be a one-off external exhibition in 2008. But um, feedback was amazing. People have loved it. And so it was decided in 2009 to buy a new building and do it again. And it's been repeated every year, bar 2012, the Olympic year when it was decided to have a change and, and do something else. 2013, it came back in earnest and we're, we're still putting it up every summer again now. This is a Argema mitrii, so it's a Madagascan moon moth. I started last year, I did the whole of last summer and then luckily managed to come back this year, which I'm really, really pleased about. Um, because like hanging around with moths and butterflies is my whole life, to be honest. Um, so I think, I think the reason why I'm so passionate about it is just the whole, the science of change with them. And especially if you're a witness to the whole process from like egg to adult and then right back round again, it's just so rewarding. Especially if you know that they've got through that far and they've gone through that process because of you and because of your help. I just, I just think it's such a beautiful, a beautiful thing to, to experience and witness. And being here, we get to witness it like all the time. So it's just, it's just amazing. <laughs> I was always into nature. Um, my parents used to take me to the forest a lot, uh, the new forest, just to dig around from sort of two or three years old. Um, and when I was six on my birthday, I don't know whether I suggested it or my parents suggested it, but they took me to a butterfly house, Sion Park, um, which isn't there anymore, but was one of the first, if not the first, main uh, walkthrough butterfly attraction in the UK. And I was just, I walked in there and was absolutely mesmerised by hundreds of butterflies flying away. So that year, I wrote to Father Christmas and asked for a greenhouse when I was six. Um, and I got one, and I built my first butterfly house when I was six, and my first tropical butterfly house when I was ten years old. And this is nice, actually. This is a banana plant, this is Musa Cavendish. This is Latin. And these eggs here are from a butterfly called Caliga memnon. They live six, seven days, usually, and will only lay on plants that she know that her, her caterpillars can feed on. When the caterpillar hatches from the egg, uh, the first thing it will do is eat its shell because it's very nutrients rich. And by, the, by eating its shell, it gives it the energy to be able to transfer to the edge of the leaf and start eating its food plant. Um, all butterflies and moths is a four stage metamorphosis. So you've got egg, caterpillar, and then chrysalis or pupae, and then adult. Um, the longest lived group uh, is a butterfly group called Helioconus. They've got a very basic form of digestion, so they can live five or six months sometimes. I've had individuals of the zebra butterfly that were nearly nine months old, certain individuals. Why? Who knows? Um, 
you know, why does a, an elephant live up to 80, 90 years? Uh, giant blue whales live possibly longer than that. And why does a caddisfly live two or three days? It's one of those things. They're one of the biggest uh, moths with tails. And I mean, you can look from the size of the cocoon as well. You can see just how big the caterpillar would be that's all squidged up in there. Um, they usually last in their adult stage about 10 days, something like that. So it's not very long, but um, that's because that they don't actually feed when they're adults. So most silk moths will lose the ability to eat and all they really need to do is just breed and flop around. So 10 days might not seem like a lot of time for us, but when that's your only purpose, I mean, it'd be a lifetime, it'd be ages. Um, the caterpillars usually get to about this big. They're absolutely huge, really chunky. Um, yeah, they're just amazing, amazing moths. <laughs> Sun was very interested as a young boy and I built him a butterfly house when he was six at home. Well, he said it was for him, it was kind of for me, but the justification was it was for Harry. And he's now 12 and so, although he's still very interested, it's not the coolest thing to do and you know he's not going to tout around school or I like playing with butterflies so football and Lego and fidget spinners are cool um, but secretly yeah he's got a bit of a passion for it as well I think. If I only had 10 days what would I do? Eat a whole load of snacks, lots of cheesy snacks, I wouldn't care, what else would I do? I don't know. That's, that, that says a lot about me doesn't it? My priorities are like cheese and food and eating. Try, well, I'd try and travel around to places that I've always wanted to go, but that would take up a lot of time as well, travelling, so I don't know. I think just making sure I'm around the people that I love, doing some fun little things, you know, chilling out, eating all the time. <laughs> Which I guess these guys don't have the luxury to do, so I'll just, I'll take the, uh, I'll take the brunt and I'll, I'll do it for them. <laughs> What do you want to do when you grow up? Oh, well, little Johnny wants to be a scientist and so-and-so wants to be a banker and so-and-so. What do you want to do, Luke? I want to build butterfly houses. It wasn't an option, so you're just thrown on the pile of, oh my God, the guy's a lunatic. Um, but the nice thing now is you can turn around and go, actually, 